Hi, this is Cheryl Gallant, your conservative member of parliament for the uncensorable riding of Renfrew Nipissing Pembroke. As the public inquiry into Trudeau's illegitimate use of the Emergencies Act continues, Canadians are getting a close look at how this government and the liberal media collaborate. On last week's episode, we looked at the ways the liberals lied about the convoy. Today, I want to reveal how they went about fabricating their fictions. As part of the evidence presented at the inquiry, a series of text messages was released. It's an exchange between Alexander Cohen, the Director of Communications for the Minister of Public Safety, Minichino, and Mary Liz Power, a policy advisor in the Prime Minister's office. The exchange took place on January 24th, five days before the convoys first arrived in Ottawa. First, Mary Liz Power writes to Alexander Cohen to recap an email she had just sent to colleagues in the Prime Minister's office. Quote, As you saw in the Pod Goals chat, the truckers' convoy and some of their more extreme comments, i.e. calling for a January 6th style insurrection, are getting more coverage in the media. Alex was surveying whether there'd be interest in his boss doing some media eventually on this. Uh, eventually. And then I think there could be an opportunity to get in on this growing narrative of the truckers, particularly with research the Liberal Research Bureau, the LRB, is doing into their backers. My thoughts, uh, the framing here would be similar to the Prime Minister Blair uh, conference when they said last year, January 6th occurred, some of the calls that organizers of these massive events are making are concerning and we're taking them very seriously. We need some, something to back this up, of course. End quote. Mr. Cohen responds, quote, thanks. I had an initial chat with my boss and he's supportive, but wants to wait a day or two. There's a danger that if we come down too hard, they might push out the crazies, end quote. To which Ms. Power replies, quote, I think that's fair. Apparently Global and others are working on stories. Maybe we see how those land, end quote. There's a lot to unpack in that brief exchange. For context, the same day this exchange was taking place, Global News had a story with the headline, Salmon Arm RCMP Thank Protesters for Peaceful Event. At this point, most media reports about the convoy related to warning residents of minor traffic disruptions as the various convoys moved across Canada. Yet the Prime Minister's office had already decided to paint this as a sequel to the tragic events in Washington, D.C. on January 6th. One line from Ms. Power really stands out. Quote, I think there could be an opportunity to get in on this growing narrative of the truckers, particularly with the research the LRB is doing into their backers. End quote. She said it was an opportunity to get on get in on the growing narrative of the truckers. Now, narrative is a fancy way of saying story. Stories are an essential part of our humanity. While some media have a conservative bias and many media have a liberal bias, all media have a story bias. bias. A good story has heroes and villains. A good story tells of overcoming a struggle. What the Liberals were trying to create was a cast of villains to feed the media. Let's look at that quote from Ms. Power again. Quote, I think there could be an opportunity to get in on this growing narrative of the truckers, particularly with the research the LRB is doing into their backers. End quote. The LRB is short for Liberal Research Bureau. This is a taxpayer-funded group of Liberal staffers on Parliament Hill. Our Conservative Research Bureau assists members of Parliament with research into bills before Parliament. 
The liberals use their bureau to research citizens who disagree with government policy with the goal of discrediting them. The liberals turn around and give this research to journalists who never actually reveal their source. The reply by Mr. Cohen, where he warns Ms. Power that if they come down too hard, they might push out the crazies, only confirms how desperate the Liberals were to paint the demonstrators in the worst possible light. Ms. Powers then agrees and suggests they wait and see how the media, and in particular, Global News, frame the research the Liberals provided. Well, wouldn't you know? The very next day on January 25th, Global News released a story which just so happens to line up perfectly with the Liberals' goals. The headline was, far-right groups hope trucker protests will be Canada's January 6th. Talk about Trudeau's favorite tactic, accusation in the mirror. The PMO wanted the Freedom Convoy likened to the deadly siege on Capitol Hill in Washington, D.C., this article should be taught in journalism schools as an example of how to craft a narrative for a friendly government. The article claims far right and white nationalist groups want a January 6th event, except not a single group is identified. Then Global provides a select sample of three quotes from unidentified individuals. In fact, the only person involved in the convoy whom Global actually named is an organizer telling people looking to cause trouble to stay home. If a reader makes it to the end of this article, they had also learned that the, article, the organizers were consistently urging everyone to be respectful. This story could have easily been framed as a peaceful movement which was working to isolate and remove the extremists. But that wasn't the narrative Trudeau's people wanted. In fact, it was this article which Trudeau used to denounce the convoy before it had ever even arrived in Ottawa. It was January 26th when Trudeau said the demonstrators held unacceptable views. On January 29th, Global News teamed up with the radical far-left taxpayer-funded anti-Canadian hate network to label the convoy as a hate movement. After that, many news outlets would frame the convoy as being a racist movement by linking it to the global news story. It's time for global news to come clean. What research did the Liberal Research Bureau provide them with? How often does global news rely on the Liberal Research Bureau for its stories? Global News is owned by Chorus Entertainment. Chorus will be one of the biggest beneficiaries of the Liberal government's online streaming censorship act, Bill C-11. Chorus would also financially benefit if C-18, the online news tax act is passed. Is it any wonder that the PMO would know the narrative Global News was writing? Live. From Ottawa, this is Cheryl Gallant.